Hi guys, Daphne here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Magonia by Maria Devana Heathley. I picked up this book because I saw the summary online when I was searching through the library catalog to put hold on books that I found interesting. The summary caught my eye because it sounded very unique and out of the ordinary, so I put it on hold and then I got it, and of course I didn't remember a single thing about it, so I just started reading it. It has a really pretty cover and I will insert that. So Magonia is about a girl named Aza Ray and she's 15. She has this rare, uncommon disease. In fact, she's the only person who has this disease, and so it is actually named after her, after her, that causes her lungs not to be able to really work well with air. She can't breathe very well, she can't talk very well. It's very, it's been impeding her functioning for her entire life, and she doesn't know really why that happens to her and her only, but she wasn't supposed to live until 16 and she's really trying to make it to 16 or she wasn't supposed to make it till 6 and then they told her she was she made it till 6 and then they told her she wasn't supposed to make it till 10 and then they told her she wasn't supposed to make it till 16 and so instead of making it to 16 she kind of does and she kind of doesn't but she ends up in Magonia which is this world of ships that have been like hovering on the horizon like above earth well, they're like on Earth, but like in the air. And she finds out that that's where she actually is from. So it's about her and figuring out her life there and how that relates to her life on Earth. And she has this best friend, maybe possibly more than that friend. His name is Jason. He's actually my favorite character. She's got her parents and her little sister and everything. Alright, so my thoughts about this book initially, I, I think this book is decent. Really, this book held my attention well enough and I was able to finish it with no trouble. You know, sometimes when I start books, it's like I get ha like 20, 50 pages in and it's just, it's not holding my attention anymore. So I switch to another one and then I have to go back to that one. And then I, I, the story doesn't connect as well. It, the storyline was pretty unique and everything and uh, Aza Ray was okay to read about. I did rate this book three stars on Goodread, which is kind of like my general rating of I will read the next one, but it's not like, wow, it's blown my mind. I mean, I'm not like obsessed with this book now or anything. The writing in the second half of the book was beautiful. It's very poetic, and I think that's associated very much with Magonia. It's a very beautiful, kind of majestic sort of location, I guess. Group of ships, location. I found that there was a noticeable contrast between Aza's first person narration in the first half of the book when she's on Earth, and then in the second half of the book when the setting is Magonia. I don't know if the author meant to do that, but that was very interesting. So it's the contrast between the more poetic Magonian side of things and then Aza Ray's sort of sarcastic, snarky narration um, on Earth, which I actually liked her narration better. In the first half I found it easier to read than the second half because that got slightly confusing but like I said I will read the next one for sure okay if you have not read Magonia now would be a good time to turn this off if you found that it was interesting to go and read it what I thought spoiler wise two things one I really liked Jason as a character he was my favorite character he was very interesting and he was a really sweet guy and he just he really cared about Aza and I liked that about him too. I really liked their friendship. They were adorable friends, like super good friends, and I loved reading about their relationship. But I found it kind of rushed that as soon as Aza left for Magonia, that she started seeing him in a different light. Like she left, but she wasn't with him at the moment when she decided that maybe she would like to be with him as more than friends. And so I found it a little bit unbelievable because she just starts like thinking constantly about him and I understand that that's like a reminder of home for her, but I felt like it was just too much too soon. The part that I really did enjoy about this book was the whole concept of the connection between the birds, like the heart birds and the songbirds and the person, the people that they're connected with. I did, however, want there to be more of a connection because I didn't feel like there was like a like deep connection between the bird and the person who 
they would connect with. I wanted it to be like wands in Harry Potter, like the wand chooses the owner, like I wanted it to be like the bird chooses their person. And that didn't happen so much. And I had a little bit of trouble imagining them completely just like opening up like this cavern in their chest and allowing these birds in. But the fact that they would sing together, the birds and the humans or the Magonians, I found that fascinating. Like that was such a cool concept and I really liked how that was developed. Not so much how it was explained, I guess that might be sort of the same thing, but like it was mentioned a ton and it was included, but it wasn't really explained how that works. And I kind of want to know more about that. So that's it for my thoughts. Please comment if you've read this book and tell me what you thought about it. If you like this video, please press the like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I got back from Junior Olympics a couple days ago. It was amazing and I had so much fun. I will see you all soon.